Hi drummers, hope you're well. So this is a shout out to channel member Phil. This is Stan Lynch's great playing from the four bar little drum solo or interlude, I guess you could say, from uh, Learning to Fly by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Happens at two minutes 52. You might want to wind it back to about two minutes 30, two minutes 35 to give yourself a little run up to it. And uh, yeah, most of this tune is a straight ahead pop rock beat, honestly. Hi-hat plays eighth notes. Kick and snare play one, two, three, four, classic rock and pop beat. Most of the time you just sit on that, make it feel good. There's a couple of interesting other moments groove-wise in this song. Perhaps I'll do a full playthrough of it actually at some point. Uh, the crash cymbals come in in quite an interesting place, especially in the chorus. Um, something about the sound of it makes me think maybe it was added after, uh, maybe it was an overdub, could be wrong, could have been played live, but something about the sound and the feel of it just makes me think it's a little bit more like, just based on my experience, like what a producer might do rather than what a drummer would play, but I could be wrong about that with that position, position of the crash cymbals. And there's also quite a fun bit, uh, like there's an example of it just there before the four bars come in, where some tom-toms come into the groove, uh, because it sounded to me like the hi-hat kept going. I played those tom-toms with my left stick, this little bit. That kind of business, perhaps I'll, like I say, perhaps I'll do a full playthrough of it shortly, but this is just about that four bar section. Now the big thing with this is the bass drum keeps pounding away all the way through on eighth notes, puts me very much in mind of something that Keith Moon would play, for example, classic sort of 60s, uh, classic rock kind of vibe. Uh, in Keith Moon's drumming and other drummers of that era, you heard a lot of That, you know, pounding away on the bass drum. It's a really nice thing. I think you can use the bass drum, of course, in all sorts of cool ways um, when you're playing drum fills. Uh, you can use it as part of the main lead line. You can play quarter notes. You can play all sorts of things. But um, yeah, that eighth note thing is very, very particular sort of rock feel, isn't it? So um, yeah, like it. it. does that all the way through all four of the bars. Right, first bar goes like this. So the bass drum plays one and two and three and four and eighth notes. The sticks here play one and two and a three and a four and a. Uh. There's various ways you could do this and in fact the other moments in these four bars as well. I've decided to all the way through play it as a single stroke roll with my lead hand going first. So right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. When it's sixteenths, when it's, I'm going to do that classic sort of grade one, grade two thing where there's, there's a rhythm figure that contains sixteenths like a one E and or a one and a. One E and you'd play right, left, right. One and you'd play as right, right, left. What you're doing is you're always preserving that idea that the 16th notes, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a go right, left, 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 right, left. And if you miss out any of those notes, like for example, in this fill, you've got four and a, misses out the E, doesn't it? Four E and a, you take away the stick that would have played it. So right, left, right, left becomes right, right, left. So you just preserve that all the way through. First bar again. So the rhythm is one and two and a three e and a four and a. Let's loop that first bar a little bit. First bar again. And three and four and two and three. Second bar goes. There is one and two and three. So crash on beat one, bass drum just keeps pounding away. At the end, you've got floor, tom and snare together. And Sounds to me like a bit of a crescendo. Starts soft and builds up. And when you crash actually on the beginning of the next bar, bar three, that's the crash and the snare together. Watch out for that. Here's the second bar. One, two and three and four. Okay, so here's the first two bars. One and two and three and four and four. 
One, two, first two bars again. And we'll go first two bars a bit slower. Two and three and four and one. And three and four. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter which crash symbols you hit. By the way, I'm hitting two different crashes. I've got two crashes on my kit here. For a bit of variety whatever crash symbols you like. I'm not going into the detail of like which crash symbol you hit. Uh, if you have two, I think it's on fills like this that use crash symbol quite often. I think it's quite nice to use different ones just for a bit of tonal variety. Uh, if you have only got one crash, you can always hit the edge of your ride as well. I always think that makes a nice crash sound for rock, provided that it's, you know, your ride symbol is such that it's suitable for crashing on and suitable for this style of music. So you could play things like Okay, that's the first two bars. Third bar goes like this. So here we've got one and two and three e and a four e and a one. Again, single stroke roll, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, all the way. So, crash and snare as discussed on beat one. one. Beat one of the fourth bar also has a crash uh, and snare together on beat one. one two, and. And two and third bar again and. And two and three and third bar last time. And fourth bar goes. So quite similar to the second bar, this time a bit of a longer build up, I reckon. One, two, and three, and four, and. Here's the third and fourth bars looped a couple of times. One, two, and three, and four, and. And two and third and fourth bars. And one time again, third and fourth bars. Here we go. Okay, let's recap. First bar. <laughs> First bar. Second bar. Third bar. And fourth bar. First and second bar. Third and fourth bars. Okay, and you guessed it, whole thing. We're going to go slow, we're going to repeat it, uh, and we're going to build up some speed as we go. One, and two, and whole thing. Here we go. whole thing a bit faster here we go and three and four and two, three, four. Two, 
Okay, one time again, deathly slow. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and two, and three, and four, and two, and three. All right, cool, cool, cool. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, so for me, going with a single stroke roll sticking, although there are loads of ways to do it on those fills around the kit, uh, flows nicely and has that advantage of your right stick. If you're right-handed, like your strong hand, whatever, your lead hand, you know, whatever handed you are, syncs up with your bass drum, assuming you're playing a conventional type of setup. Uh, cool, man. Love it, love it, love it. So shout out to Phil. I hope that makes sense. As usual, over on the channel members page now, I'll put the full notation and the practice along version that you can slow right down and loop and play along with over and over and over and over and over and over and build that up if you like. Uh, like I said, I'll do a full playthrough of the song uh, at some point as well because it's a really fun one. I thought that was the most interesting feature. Nice catch, uh, Phil. And if you're playing that song, you know, I know people always say, well, I, you know, I don't like to copy what a drummer did. I like to do my own thing. Like I always say, that's completely cool. In that case, go for it. I actually think it's really nice if you can at least have a nod to the feel of the original, if, if it, assuming that's what you're aiming for. If it feels right, then you've gone a long way to, to um, you know, doing your job, I think. there. Imagine you're playing that, uh, you know, jamming it with a band. Um, you know, at that point, people who knew the song, perhaps the other members of the band would be like, yeah, man, that felt that felt like the, the real thing. So it's always a lovely thing to do. And in any case, even if you're not planning to play the song, learning moments like this is just so brilliant because, you know, in my opinion, like I always say, we're exposing our musical brain to brilliant vocabulary that even if we're not then using it to play this song, we can reuse it, change it, be inspired by it constant healthy diet of taking in great quality information for me is so important as opposed to just sitting playing our own stuff over and over and over again that's how we sort of fit in my case I can only speak for myself that's how I find myself getting into a bit of a rut playing the same things over and over and over again only playing the things that I internally come up with by exposing our musical brains to new information constantly just like in real life if you read if you travel if you do interesting things constantly expose your brain to good quality information uh it's just the healthiest possible thing uh, in my opinion it allows us to be more creative and more ideas and uh, yeah we, of course we're re we're using information that we bring in so then it goes into our vocabulary and we can then uh yeah, unleash it in all sorts of different uh, fun ways so shout out to phil a great bit of playing by stan lynch uh, definitely a great song to jam along to and see you soon uh, if like i say thanks uh, to Phil and all the lovely channel members as ever. If becoming a channel member of this channel uh, sounds like it would be of interest to you if you found these videos useful, they're helpful, and you'd like to improve your drumming and have a bit of support on that front, uh, please consider becoming a channel member. For £10 a month, you can help this channel like crazy and help it grow. Thanks a million to all the lovely people who've come in and become uh, members. Uh, you get a whole lot of things in return, including a complimentary practice plan that I'll update for you as you practice as you go along. We'll have a complimentary Zoom or face-to-face uh, -face session at first, if you want one, to go through that and set that uh, plan up so you're super clear what's going on with that and then as you work on it like I say you can send me your videos practice videos anytime I'll give you feedback when we're, re when we're ready you can then add more material on it'll be a living breathing thing that is your uh, constant source of hopefully practice sort of discipline hopefully inspiration sort of uh, knowing what sort of things to practice and a uh, whole lot of other things as well you can send me questions anytime I'll email you back or do video responses uh, you get the notation and practice alongs for all the videos tutorial videos like this that I put up but also members videos breakdowns of the drum covers that I put up and a whole lot of other features uh, as well in the pipeline for that like I say if that sounds like it'd be of interest the link to sign up is above or below depending where you're watching this and thanks as well to all the amazing people who support this channel by buying me a coffee T can't tell you how much I appreciate that that's via the same page this is all via my buy me a coffee support page which again you'll find linked above or below depending where you're watching it thanks a million shout out to Phil see you soon